You already found out that nowadays Precise is much more than a coupling library. It has evolved into a rapidly growing multi-physics ecosystem. The question is, how can we keep developing all the components of this ecosystem confidently, knowing that we don't break anything? My name is Gerasimus Kurdakis, and today I would like to show you some of the challenges and opportunities we have in testing a complex, precise ecosystem. I already talked about the precise ecosystem on Monday in the same workshop, where I showed this picture showing how everything is dependent on each other. We have tutorials which depend on specific solvers and adapters, which may depend on specific language bindings, which then depend on the precise library itself. You may also look at it like a fresh onion that has the precise library in the core and all the other components in additional layers. When we talk about testing, we distinguish separate types of tests. Inside one program, we have usually unit tests and integration tests. Unit tests check specific functions for their behavior. They give some predefined, uh, relatively artificial input and they expect some specific output. In the integration tests, we check how multiple functions and multiple parts of the same program are working together. My colleague Frederic Simonis has done an excellent job in further improving and simplifying the testing infrastructure of the Precise Core Library. He also wrote a very nice blog post for the Better Scientific Software blog, which I would really encourage you to read. If you want to find out about how we test the Precise Library and the complete ecosystem in general, you may also want to read our latest Precise version 2 paper currently in review. If we now look at more than one software package or one software package used for a specific purpose, we want to test the complete system. In terms of Precise, we want to run complete simulations combining multiple solvers and in the end, we want to check that the results do not change. We call this system tests, and an alternative name would also be regression tests. Make sure to understand the difference between testing and validation. In software, testing means testing that the behavior does not change unintentionally. Validation is a completely different chapter that, of course, we are doing, but I will not talk about this today. You may have heard already that Precise has system tests. And this is correct. Yes, we had system tests for a while, but then things happened. Here you see uh, on the right a collection of tests that we were running with every commit. We were building Precise and we were building it from source in debug and release. Uh, we were installing it from uh, the released binary packages. We were installing it in a user directory or on a system directory. And then we were building uh, adapters with uh, different um, systems in mind. And then we were running uh, as many tutorials as possible on as many systems as possible. And this led, of course, to very long uh, simulations. So in total, the complete stack uh, you see here, it was running for the complete set of tutorials was running for one and a half hours. And this is already after a lot of work to reduce the total runtime. And this system has been developed for a few years and has had multiple contributions, mostly by students in the latest years by Konrad Eder and previously by Dimitros Asko. 
and it was a collection of uh, Python scripts executing Docker uh, code, Docker containers on Travis CI. Travis CI was uh, a service that uh, eventually changed owner and policies and even changed essentially its domain name. And in combination with uh, having the know-how mostly in the heads of the students that were coming and going, we were in a situation that this system was a bit difficult to keep maintaining. I guess that the story sounds familiar to many of you out there in the academic software development world. Now, if you go to, to the Travis CI page today, you will see a lot of red. And this is because we, we don't use this system anymore. We don't maintain it. What we do uh, actually test right now is that we do run the tutorials on our systems manually with every release. And we try to look at the results as close as uh, the release cycle allows us. That's also why it is very important that we get feedback for you whenever you see anything strange. What we are doing uh, in the meantime, and what I have been working on as a side project for a bit, is that we are building a new system test infrastructure based on new tools. These new tools give us additional functionality that was not there uh, when we first started, and the tools did not exist back then. The main two alternatives we had to consider uh, were GitHub Actions and GitLab CI. Its system is best integrated uh, in its own, in the respective uh, repository management tool. So we have GitHub Actions working great with GitHub and we have GitLab CI working great with GitLab. You can also mix them. You can use GitLab CI on GitHub. But, of course, um, you need to have good reasons to do that. We wanted to minimize dependencies, as we already, with Travis, needed to go to a separate page to, to see even if um, what exactly failed. Now, what additional functionality do we get? With GitHub Actions, everything is integrated there. We have uh, build uh, artifacts, we have custom runners, and it's really easy to, to start developing. The system is already there, you don't need to, to assign it. And also you can just directly use a pre-packaged, pre-made uh, GitHub Actions by the community, which can automate very common tasks in just three or four lines of code. What this gives us in the end is different workflows, as you can see here on the left. And here you see workflows that we have for the precise repository. We run several tests, we check the style, we run some linters, and we know what, which commits have succeeded and which commits have failed the test. It's now very easy to find specific uh, runs and find the commit they are associated with and find the logs and understand what went wrong. We have now started porting the system also to the adapters. This is usually how it happens. We have the main library leading the way and the repositories adapting to what the main library is using. In the OpenFOAM adapter we already have a few workflows most importantly, we now build always every commit with uh, uh, the latest OpenFOAM version. Uh, we also check the formatting and we now also have an additional uh, functionality that we can run a custom build, which we can trigger manually whenever we need. And we can say, build the OpenFOAM adapter in Ubuntu 18.04, for example, 
with this branch of the adapter, this open phone version, this precise version, and try to run some basic tutorials. And this can already catch many problems. We are trying to support multiple open phone versions and this is becoming increasingly difficult, especially since we don't have the versions installed on our systems. But at the same time, others need these older or alternative versions. So uh, having the possibility to manually specify specific uh, runs whenever needed is really important for maintaining all this compatibility matrix. What you see here is a picture from the testing section from our precise reference paper. And I would like to refer you to that if you want to read it in detail. But what you see here is the green boxes being uh, the core library and the closest to the core bindings. And in orange, we have the different adapters. In gray, we have the outer layers that you're usually interacting with. What you see here is that the precise library has uh, several workflows and tests, of course, also due to historical reasons, and also because it is one library. It is much easier to test one component by itself. More or less, moreover, uh, it does not depend on uh, downstream components. So if you want to test an adapter, this is much more complicated because you have to mock specific uh, dependencies. You have to mock precise and you have to mock uh, Phoenix if, uh, if that's also something you want to isolate. Now, the Phoenix adapter is doing a very good job here and it is already running very simple system tests inside the repository. This is something we cannot do with every adapter because we don't have tutorial cases that depend only on the same solver for all adapters. In OpenFoam, we can do, and that's why we are doing it, but we cannot do this, for example, in DL2 or Calculix. In, well, we can in Calculix, but maybe not in SU2. The goal is that in the end, in the, in the tutorials repository, we can run every tutorial that we have in meaningful combinations and get these green check marks when things are going fine. And by things going fine, I mean that everything is building, simulations are running and the results are the same. We also have to consider different perspectives. The Precise team has uh, now several developers and each of us has a different focus. Frederick is working a lot uh, in the core library. I'm working a lot, for example, in the OpenFOAM adapter. At the same time, we have now projects such as the precise distribution. So the question for the precise distribution is, is everything already working well together? Can we just push a button and take these versions from develop and make a new distribution. And this is something that we would like to do with tests that would be run nightly or on demand. At the same time, if we now take the, the perspective of an adapter developer, the adapter developer would like to release a specific feature and the adapter should still work with the released versions of the upstream components and also with the released versions of the downstream components. If it does not, then maybe we need to adapt something. And this is something that we would like to run on every pull request. For this reason, we should find a way to bypass uh, this dependency um, tree and get directly uh, specific components. At the same time, when the time comes for a precise version 3, uh, we will have breaking changes and we may need to test specific branches together. What is the current state of all this? 
it's a uh, work in progress it's a prototype it is uh, running both locally you can start it from the tutorials uh, directory and you can also let github actions run it for you it only checks the latest versions of uh, specific branches you this is not yet mainstream and i currently only have one test case that is only using precise open form adapter and the tutorials repository in their latest versions and it runs the flow overheated plate uh, with two instances of open form and does not yet uh, compare the results, although this is something very easy to implement. My next steps would be to uh, implement this results comparison that I will talk about in a moment, and then to add the possibility to manually trigger any combination you want. A specific challenge there will be how to organize the tags and select uh, which tags to actually make uh, make discoverable publicly and which would be more noise than helping we then need to extend this to all the repositories and tutorials and implement the automated triggering which will be significant additional work there are currently three pull requests that you can look at but they are really work in progress at the moment so what is the general idea? We have a GitHub repository for every project and they are executing GitHub Actions workflows which are building Docker images and they are uh, pushing them to the GitHub container registry. For example, Precise is building an image based on Ubuntu 20.04 that has just the uh, dependencies needed and pushes the tag precise latest. Then the open form adapter would pull this uh, image from the same uh, server essentially and build its own uh, open form adapter image. It would then tag it appropriately, other adapters would do the same and then in the tutorials repository and not in a distinct repository we would just consume all these images and we would uh, start essentially two systems, two Docker containers, as Precise actually can work across uh, systems already in supercomputers, for example. And we would combine uh, just the containers we need and we would run our tests. What is this uh, GitHub container registry? This is yet another new feature that uh, did not exist beforehand. It is a storage repository that exists on GitHub and it is meant for such uh, ready to use uh, binary packages. For example, Docker images. We can have different versions there and we already have one for the open form adapter so you could try this out but yeah don't don't expect much this is currently uh, uncharted territory when we are running any workflow with uh, github actions we also get very nice logs and this is what you would see when running the tutorials we have different jobs and every job does not overwhelm us in the beginning but is minimized and we can easily search the logs whenever needed. In the end, this would give us also build artifacts, we can, you can see here at the bottom of the screen. And in particular, uh, we are pushing here the logs of the solver, so a very small file that we can quickly check, as well as the complete case directories to visualize for example power view and see what exactly is happening an important difference than the previous system is that before we did not have this uh, this feature and we had to push to a separate uh, repository that only served as uh, as a logger 
and it was particularly difficult to find out what went wrong when something was going wrong. With this approach, uh, the artifacts and the logs are directly attached to the respective run, so it is really easy to find out what went wrong. I talked already about comparing results, so what to compare to actually? This is a challenge that we had to overcome over the past years and we tried different strategies. First of all, checking the solver logs is not enough and also it is also difficult to check them. They are not identical because they often con uh, contain information such as uh, how much time it took, uh, which could be different in milliseconds, or when it started, some date time, or what system it ran on. Originally, we started filtering out information, but this was really a pain. Then we could also compare the complete results of a solver. However, this is problematic because we have so many different formats. We have to implement our own parsers. We have to do our own number comparisons, our own filtering. This does not scale much. So we want to completely eliminate uh, this, uh, this problem. For this reason, uh, we studied if we can actually use just the precise exports, so the VTK files or potentially the watch points. This way we would have a format that we control. It would be the same among runs. It would be the same among solvers. It contains no time-related noise. And I, I gave this uh, as a question to, to a student in our FSI seminar, Mohamed Kanch, and he developed a few uh, common bug cases and found out that yes, this is enough to cover most of the common bugs. Besides, if we are having time-dependent simulations, some problem inside the domain should eventually propagate to the interface as well. Then, we need to actually store this reference result somewhere. And this is something that is very interesting for you because you would be able to just see this exports, this reference data directly with the tutorial. This means that you could, first of all, just see the result before you even run the tutorial, and you would be able to compare your case to the other cases without really needing to run and uh, first validate your runs with, uh, with the citable reference. We would also need to include a Docker Compose configuration file in its test, which uh, then would be triggered by a script that you can run either locally or on your um, GitHub Actions workflow. So, maybe to, to start summing it up. How is this new system better? And how will it be better when, when it's actually in production? In the previous approach, we were using Travis CI, a tool that is essentially uh, yeah, not, not so uh, focused on open source projects anymore. And you could also run it locally. And in the new system, we are using GitHub Actions, which is directly integrated on GitHub. And of course, you can also run it locally. You can debug the system tests also locally. Then, uh, a new feature is that you can also have local runners in GitHub Actions, meaning that you can start uh, workflows from GitHub and they can run on your private server where you may be running, for example, uh, MATLAB with a license that you have because you want to test the MATLAB bindings or you may want to test your in-house solver. So you could also uh, take our system tests and use them to run uh, your own uh, tests in-house. To store the containers that we produce, the images, before uh, we were using Docker Hub, yet another external tool that now also has its own limits. Now we are using the GitHub Container Registry, with, which is directly integrated in the repository. 
after we built everything before we had to push the results in a separate repository now it's extremely easy to just store them directly next to the job and before we were trying to test all possible combinations which created several issues also a gigantic structure that was difficult to maintain and now um, we want to only test selected meaningful combinations by default but also allow you to run anything on demand without spoiling the public uh, repository the goal of the previous system was essentially to develop several features and to have wide coverage and i don't want to 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 blame the old system i was also heavily involved in the development of that and i know the reasons behind all the decisions but in the new system our goal has to be that the code needs to be minimal and sustainable when the people change it should be very easy for any other developer to keep up the pace. Now, if uh, you got lost a bit in the previous uh, minutes, let me repeat that the precise library, it is tested widely, it is safe, and the ecosystem itself uh, as a whole is to some extent tested and it's getting better every year. The system test that we had to test the complete ecosystem grew and shined but uh, yeah they, they were hit by the bus meaning of uh, yeah losing losing knowledge and uh, by vendor lock-in that uh, eventually a tool we were using uh, changed policies then uh, we now have a new simpler implementation which is based on new tools and the experience we acquired so far and it is a work in progress you you don't yet uh, have it mainstream but we will be able to see it in the next months if you want to read more please check again our version 2 paper and the blog post on the better scientific software blog my name is, is Gerasmus Kordakis and Thank you very much for joining me in this talk. So.